So now David Warner and Terry Malloy star in the final episode of The Scarifiers, The Horror of Loch Ness, which also features the final performance of the late, great Philip Maddock. Honestly, amateurs, turn east, east, you're doing it all wrong. Side of the horns. No, both hands. Bloody near fights. What? Who's that? Now keep still. Harry? We'll have you free in a tick. We? Who's with you? Well, Dr. Pippin from the village. What on earth? Hail unto my master, the devil, the lord of this world, and prince of darkness. Is he doing up there? Oh, mighty serpent of Enid's demise. Pippin? Hello. To thee I give praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Haddo? Who the hell's Haddo? An old acquaintance. Friends, Neanderthals, countrymen. In the short time that we have known each other, I believe that we have each had a great influence on the other. I have brought you some of the fruits of my age, and you have in turn treated me like a king. A position which, I have to say, suits me down to the ground. (laughs) When we first met, I must admit, I thought you were a bunch of... Smelly, ignorant brutes. But over time, I have come to think of you as, um... Equals? Yes, I think that's pushing it. And as I was saying, uh, I'm going to miss you all, particularly you, (laughs) Ungisha. And in conclusion, I just hope that I leave you uh, uh, well-placed for the challenges which you will face over the next uh, half a million years. And now, without any further ado, goodbye. Go, go. <laughs> Engine running. Are you quite sure we have enough road? Road? <laughs> well, we're going. We don't need. F- oh, bugger! You two have met. Oh yes, we've met, haven't we, Crawley? Sorry, I don't recall. Oliver Haddo. You remember. Um, the name rings a bell, but the face... Thirty years ago, I was a student of the dark arts. Your student. Ah, perhaps I do remember you. Didn't you lay my croquet lawn? (laughs) Did he really? You did a very good job, I thought. Do you know, Haddo, as a gardener, you were absolutely first-rate. No complaints at all. Your magic, on the other hand... Yes, yes, mock all you want. There's nothing you can teach me now. I think you should know, Mr. Crow, that when he who is of the darkness is revealed to us in all his terrible glory, we have only Alistair to thank. Don't look at me. The man's raving. It all began with your Abramelin operation. Which didn't work, as you well know. Or not as you imagined, perhaps. You didn't, it is true, summon your guardian angel, but you did summon something. Something, as it turns out, of far greater importance. Like what? I didn't realize, not at first. It was several months after you left for America that the rumors began. Rumors of a creature in the loch. Oh, please. At first I dismissed them, but they persisted. And then one day, I saw it for myself. I was fishing on the loch when something rather large stuck its head out of the water and looked at me. No monster, but a plesiosaur. Late Cretaceous period. I don't know who was the more surprised. Poppycock. Take some credit, man. You summon the Loch Ness Monster. Blast! Oh, dear. That's not good, is it? Oh, don't worry. It's just a temporary hitch. It's not as if we're in that much of a... Hurry. It's not. It's that 
dinosaur again. No, it's not. This one's bigger. You've seen it before. I tried to take a bite out of Bluebird once. Seems to like anything shiny. Where are they all coming from? Coming from? Sorry. Yes, coming from. I'm quite sure now that this time period is circa 400,000 BC. These dinosaurs are out of their time just as much as we are. Maybe that's why they're so cheesed off. So we tried your ceremony again, and... Yes? Nothing happened. So we tried again, and then again, and eventually another monster appeared. Another Loch Ness monster. In a sense. Different beats, though. Jurassic period this time. You see, Crowley, some aspect of your Abramelin operation had worked. Somewhere, buried among all that ludicrous mumbo-jumbo, was the key to another world. Another time. Another time? Tell me, the Abramelin ritual, where was it from? the sacred book of Abramelin the Mage, of mm -hmm. course, and some incantations of my own devising. And the melody? I don't recall. A song, I think. A local ballad. Addressed to the devil. A ballad sung down the generations for hundreds upon hundreds of years, maybe thousands. You're saying that the dinosaurs appeared because you sang an old song? Ah, but what was in the song? How do you summon a demon? By naming it. By naming it. By singing its true name in a long-forgotten tongue. You've been singing the true names of dinosaurs? Are you off your head? No, 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 no. The reptiles are merely the symptoms, not the cause. What do you mean? Something is causing time to fracture. Something that dwells in prehistory, long before man walked the earth. A vast, all-powerful, interdimensional being whose influence stretches across all time. Now, what do you think that could be? Search me. An ancient demon that fell to earth, right where we're standing, half a million years ago. No! A demon that, thanks to your rituals, is even now waking up, causing the historical aberrations you've witnessed. You must stop this, Hatto. The magnum in nominandum, the nameless mist, the prince of darkness. The king and yellow, Lucifer, Satan, Set. The devil. Ah! Oh, it's him! Who? Oh, the monster! Alistair Crowley. We meet again. We do. I'm quite sure I don't know anyone with a goldfish bowl for a head. <laughs> you don't recognize me? That voice. Sebastian? People seem to be leaving us. Not as stupid as they look, you know. How's our friend back there? Um, well, it's just appeared at the far end of the clearing and is... Ah, yes, it's, it's coming this way. Us! Ah, no, it's coming a little faster. Right. It is very big, isn't it? Come on, come on, come on! Sebastian Malherb, the Limehouse Vampire... You know me? Unfortunately. I was Lionheart's right-hand man on the Virgin Bride's case. Ha! Ah, Lionheart! It is thanks to that bastardly oaf that I am so reduced in stature. Yes, I've heard all about the brouhaha down at Denge Marsh, but I rather got the impression it had finished you off. <laughs> you think that a mere trifle such as that could stop me? A mere trifle? I thought you were swallowed by a giant squid from space. Swallowed? Yes by Shabna Gorath, the ungrateful interdimensional hussy. And if she'd had time to fully digest me, then perhaps that would have been the end. But, ironically, Lionheart's intervention with an acid bomb saved my life. I was found in the wreckage of her bloated corpse by two of my faithful followers. My body was beyond repair, shredded, mangled and torn. But my brain was intact and my intelligence more focused than ever. I realized that there was only one man who could restore me to my former vigor, 
an acolyte of mine from days of old who, under the guise of a mild-mannered family doctor, was actually one of the greatest surgeons alive. And who was that, then? Me, you idiot. Oh. So you did this, did you? <laughs> nice legs, Malherb. What? What of them? Very shapely. Shh, 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 shh. There's nothing wrong with them, Sebastian. Hmm? Except they're wearing tights. They're woman's legs. Pippin, I cannot see. Is this true? Am I wearing tights? Mm, yes, but they are lovely legs, Master. They certainly are absolutely gorgeous. Laugh while you can, Crow. You will not find it so amusing when I am wearing your head. My head? Yes, I'm afraid we need it. Well, you can't have it! <laughs> you see, summoning the Magnum Inominandum comes at a terrible price. Magnum Inominandum is Latin for great not to be named, as I'm sure you're aware. Well, of course. The reason it is so called is that if you say its true name, you die. And for that reason, not many people bother. But if we first offer a sacrifice, then the nameless mist will be appeased. I see. So this is the contribution you will be making. Your death will mollify the Prince of Darkness, and your head will be mine to wear. Kill two birds with one stone. Everyone's happy. Well, I'm not. I'd rather hang on to my head if it's all the same to you. <laughs> now, Mr. Crow, don't be selfish. We must all make sacrifices. You especially. Mr. Pish. Tie him to the altar. Aye, sir. How fast can they run, I wonder? 20 miles an hour? 30? <laughs> Still no good. So sorry about this, old man. Bloody tip. Ah, ah. Starting up now. Oh. <laughs> Hooray. Here we go. Chin up, Harry. Thank you, Crowley. Not the best choice of words. Hail to thee, Tai Fu, beast of the sea, lord of the waters and creature of the depths. Tai Fu? Hail to thee, prince of darkness, he who is of the darkness, but who brings the light. Here it comes, the mist, the nameless mist. Here you are, sir, my best axe. Now, do it now, Mr. Boyd. Don't do it now, Mr. Boyd. Cut off his head. No, don't cut off my head. Master, with this sacrifice, I call thee forth from the bottomless abyss. Listen, it comes. I call your one true name. What the? That's not the Magnum Inominander. What did I tell you? 88 miles per hour. The temporal displacement occurred exactly as predicted. Why is there always a bloody tree in the way? Haddo, what is happening? Um, big blue rocket car has just appeared out of nowhere. What? Hasn't hit a tree. What kind of idiot? Well, looks like... Yes, it's, it's that Professor Dunning. Dunning? That myopic mediocrity is here as well? Don't worry, Mr. Malherbe, sir. My people have it under control. Mr. Taggart, Mr. Pish, seize them. I say, the natives don't look very pleased to see us. That's Mr. Pish, the landlord. He looks rather irate. <laughs> Did you forget to pay the bill? What's that noise? Uh, I, I think we may have been followed. Heavens! Help a bulb! It's Nessie! Hey, I'm off! Hey, Pish! Wait for me! The dead man run! Ha! Boyd! Boyd! You craven imbecile! Oh, if you want something done, I don't give me that axe! That queer 
looking fellow over there. Oh, yes? I think he's about to cut your colleague's head off. Oh, no. You best go to help him. I'll take care of Tinkerbell here. Tinkerbell? Yes. I think I know how to handle her. Ooh. Well, good luck. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Crow. I'm coming. I say, you there. <laughs> yes, you, you scaly little beauty. Come on, then. Catch me if you can. Goodbye, Crow. Ha! No! Well, no, you missed again, sir. Oh, bad luck. Damnation, curse this blindness. It's just a little to your left. Uh, that's it. Stop this! <laughs> Wait your turn, Crowley. Ate Malkuth Vegebura. What are you doing? What's he doing? Vegedula e Olam, I call to thee to give me your might. <laughs> A possession spell? By the power of three, so mote it be, so mote it be. You believe such tricks will work on me? <laughs> My mind is immune to such base magic. Perhaps, but your limbs are not. M my limbs? The new ones, the ones you borrowed from other people. What? Now, dance! What the... No! That's it, Malherb. A jig, I think. Crack my legs! Stop <laughs> this! <laughs> you know, you're really rather good. <laughs> Isn't he good? Very talented. <laughs> Haddo, do something! Better join the dance, Haddo. Come a little closer, why don't you? Damn you, Crowley. Haddo! I won't fail you, Master. Haddo, come back! Come on, follow your Uncle Malcolm. That's it. This way. Come on, into the forest. I say, Malher, what big arms you have. Ouch! Oh, lovely uppercut. Jab, jab. <laughs> yes, a haymaker. <laughs> Crow? Dunny! Thank God you're alive. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Who still will I, I take these off? Okay. Uh, who are these people? Uh, have I missed something important? Uh, yes. Pippin's a Satanist. The locals are all in on it. Typical. And the chap with the round, shiny head and breathtaking thighs is Sebastian Malherb. Malherb? Oh, no. Oh, don't worry. Crowley seems to be keeping him busy. Oh, you swine! I'll kill you, you fucker! Where did Pippin go? Up that path, over there. Oh, he's up to something. Come on! They're 53 years old and still climbing trees. Bloody undignified. <laughs> Come on, girl. That's it. Come on, this way. Don't want to get a spike up the jacks, eh? Geronimo! <laughs> hey, hey, that's it! There's a good girl. Now, where's Reverse? What shapely legs you have, Malherb. I expect your arms would like to copper feel, eh? <laughs> <laughs> No! <laughs> this is an outrage! <laughs> that is enough! You credulous cry! Enough! I deny your power over me! Where have you been, anyway? Ah. <laughs> no, the question you should be asking is... When have I been? <laughs> you trying to be funny? Um... Yes. Well, don't. Oh, sorry. Oh, dear. Damn me, it's, it's terribly steep. Now, come on, Dunning, not much further. Where, where, where's he going? Ha! My will is too strong. Your feeble incantations will not work on me. Oh, go on. Kick yourself in the nuts again, just for me. I think it's time to test these new arms of mine. Perhaps this newfound strength will be of use after all. <laughs> well, isn't that <laughs> just like you? <laughs> no, settled it. You're finished, Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny head! Keep, keep, keep away! 
doesn't give her indigestion. Alistair Crowley, by the way. Campbell. Malcolm Campbell. How do you do? Now, if you could untie me, Mr. Campbell, I need to find my friends and defeat an ancient nameless evil. Oh, oh dear me. Gosh, it's a long way up. Uh, Pippin or Haddo or whatever your name is. Magnum Immanimandun. Nameless mist, I call thee... What are you doing? Ah, Mr. Crow, and Professor Dunning. How nice to see you back from the dead. Though not for long, I fear. What do you mean? I call thee forth from the bottomless abyss. No, stop! And why on earth should I do that? Because if you say its true name, you die, remember? Unless you offer up a sacrifice first. And there hasn't been a sacrifice. Has there not? No, there hasn't. Look, neck very much intact. Thank you. Oh, curses. So, you can't win. You can't conjure up this devil of yours. It's over, Haddo. Haddo, you fiend. Step away from these fine fellows and surrender yourself. No, it's all right, Alistair. For Malherb is dead. Dead? Sebastian? Yes. So all your plots and stratagems are come to naught. Are they indeed? Oh, dear. Lord of Darkness, I supplicate myself to thee through the sacrifice of my master, Sebastian Malherbe. Eh? And call your one true name. Can he do that? Neog Sothep. It seems he can. Oh, oh, dear. Too late, Crowley. It's coming. But how? I spoke the words, your words, your summoning ritual, which you very obligingly left behind at Polskin House. Oh, oh my! What's that? Neog Sothep rises. Neog what? Imagine a beast the size of St. Paul's Cathedral with tentacles like tree trunks and a thousand gimlet eyes boring into your soul. I don't have to. I've seen it before. Well, yes, but now multiply that by a hundred. By a thousand, even. And under my command, Neog Sothep will tear this world apart. Well, there's no need to sound so happy about it. After endless ages of waiting... We await the fall of the nameless mist, the Magnum Immonimandum. Magnum Immonimandum? Yes. <laughs> Pippin, you bungler! Bungler? It's Magnum Immonimandum, not Magnum Immonimandum. You got the words wrong. I got it. I did not. Did too? Impossible. I read your summoning ritual word for word. I can assure you, Haddo, that you did not. It's Typhon, Beast of the Sea, not Typhu. And Mighty Serpent of Eden's Demise, not Enid's Demise. Well, then, then it must be your handwriting. My handwriting? My handwriting is first rate. For a five-year-old, perhaps. A five-year-old? A five-year-old would hardly write in the French Ron style as I do. Might as well be Greek for all the sense it makes. Your infantile scribble wouldn't pass muster in a remedial school. How dare you impugn my penmanship? I don't believe this. The world's about to end and you're arguing about a few spelling mistakes. They're not just any spelling mistakes, Mr. Crow. New York Southern, you came at my call. Keep still. Keep very, very still. Still? It's not us, it was. Tentacle at four o'clock. Sure about that. I'm almost certain that this particular pan-dimensional deity only has eyes for Haddo here. Almost certain? He may have bungled the rest of the ceremony, but he did manage to get one thing right. The one thing that can never be spoken with impunity. No. What are you doing? Get off me, you slimy thing! Its name. No! Get off! Put me down! So long, Haddo! Damn you, Crowley! 
damn you and your childish skull! Ugh. Bloody hell. That's no way to go. Well, I did say he should have stuck to the gardening. What about Yog? What's his name? With any luck. Oh, goodness me. It's disappearing. Well, quite. Pippin botched the spell. It didn't come because he summoned it. It came to teach him a lesson for daring to speak its name. I see. Well, job well done, I think. Anyone fancy a pint? Welcome back, Skipper. Glad to be at home, dear. Bottoms up! <laughs> Will you be staying at Loch Ness much longer, Malcolm? I'm afraid not. We're carrying on the speed trials at Loch Lomond. Too many dinosaurs in this one. Ooh. <laughs> and what are your plans, Alistair? Oh, I think I may stay a while longer to take in the Highland air. There's also a book I need to return. A book? A cookery book. Oh, and uh, Mr. Campbell has promised to take me for a ride on his dinosaur before he goes. Where is it, anyway? Harry's taken her out for a spin. Harder, men. Harder, yes, that's it. Ah, gentlemen. Ah, uh, Mr. Crow. And what are you two doing up this early? Taking the morning air? Uh, uh, yes, out for a stroll. Isn't that right, Marmaduke? Uh, in fact, you've caught us at a rather opportune moment. We find this hard to believe, but... Now, let me guess. You just happened upon another dinosaur footprint. Bang on, Mr. Crow. This one's a beauty. Hmm. And this is it, is it? Hmm. But on the small side there, don't you think? Small? Yes, compared to the one over there. What one over where? My God, that's enormous. Must be six foot. How on earth? Good is... try, Mr. Crow. But I'm afraid to say they're just too big. You think? Assuming that the creature is a giant theropod of some description, it would have to be 30... Marmaduke. ...or even 40 foot... Marmaduke! ...tall! Ah, oh, there you are. These gentlemen think your feet are too big. Yes, I know, that's no way to talk to a lady. Run, Bunter! Run! In The Scarifiers, The Horror of Loch Ness, Harry Crow was played by David Warner, Professor Dunning by Terry Malloy, and Dr Pippin by Philip Maddock. Alistair Crowley was played by David Benson, Malcolm Campbell by Alex Lowe, Mrs Ladd by Lizzie Roper, and Sebastian by David Bickerstaff. It was written by Simon Barnard and Paul Morris and was a Cosmic Hobo production. And tomorrow, a military space mission is taken over by the voices of the dead calling back to Earth. That's in Kurt Vonnegut's Thanosphere.